Hello, my soccer universe, to the second round of video for the past weekend. We're looking now at the Western European uh, leagues, La Liga, Liga. Uh, we also look, in look into Liga Nosh, and it's because of Liga Nosh that I'm wearing this Mali jersey. We'll talk about this a little bit later. Uh, I expect a little rant coming up but let's start first with some happier things in La Liga I actually I, you know those are three teams that I'm showcasing uh, Real Madrid Barcelona and PSG uh, I'm gonna switch it up a bit uh, La Liga started actually with a really interesting for a change matchup between Valencia and Atletico Madrid this to me had in a way a goalless draw written all over but to be honest from when I saw the highlights this seemed to be a lively game where Atletico Madrid um, for once scores and scores even two goals and they even take the lead very early on uh, through Llorente after 15 minutes and uh, they were large, largely a better team. I'm not so sure how I like those black uh, jerseys that they were wearing. Uh, I mean it looks all right-ish overall but is it really Atleti and then with the monochromatic crest? Not so uh, cra crazy about that. Um, it took Valencia a while to get something going and they get the equalizer through Gabriel Palista in the 40th, um, but then party with a wonderful um, individual effort, Gal goes up, takes the shot, makes it 2-1 for Atletico Madrid um, right before the half and you really thought, wow, this is, has been a long time that Atleti had a big statement. It was not quite happening because Parejo assists Contogbia to get a draw. Valencia at the end probably had even some good chances to win it, although Atletico was also not entirely out of it. Then uh, Mallorca Alaves 1 0, didn't see much of that. I saw Barcelona Getafe, and I have to say, this was a super weird game. Super weird game. Uh, because for the most part of the first period, uh, for the first half, first period, both works, I thought Getafe really showed why they're up there and really gave Barcelona trouble. Yes, Barcelona had a good chance uh, early on, but I think that Getafe with their high line and um, really identifiable play frustrated the hell out of Barcelona and in the end actually almost took the lead if it wasn't for a very clear foul play from um, uh, of um, the of Getafe, I really have to say they were the better team in this first half. And then Messi has a moment of brilliance where he wonderful touch, played the ball through to Griezmann in the thirty third, makes it one nil, and then Sergio Roberto makes it uh, shortly after two nil, and I. Barcelona had no idea how how they got there. Yes. They had more possession. Yes, they uh, overall you see there's a little bit more uh, identity already there, but the way Getafe frustrated them was telling. But then once they had this 2 0 lead, it also seemed for the most time and for most most time in the second uh, half at the beginning uh, that yeah this is done. Barcelona doesn't need to do much more. Uh, we just need to play it home because Getafe is not gonna come back. <laughs> Mata. Nice cross in and Rodriguez with a wonderful one-timer uh, puts it in the net, makes it 2-1 and then Getafe was there again. Uh, it took especially a save by Ter Stegen where I think it, he first saves it kind of hand and shoulder and then pulls it out. I mean, it was almost a mistake and then he made something out, out of it. Have to say Griezmann needs to put the game away uh, thereafter, but... When you looked at the faces after the game ended, I mean, they had the typical message on. This was the message shot that I come to kind of, uh, yeah, or perversely enjoy where he just stands there after a loss. It was not a loss, but Messi just stood there alone and you could see kind of in his face, we're not going to win much if we're going to continue playing like that. In addition, Jordi Alba came off, but honestly... I think the, he was part, part, part of a problem because he was pressing up way too high when he should have stayed back and I think that actually helped Barcelona in the, in the end that he came off. But yeah, it adds to the list of injuries. <sighs> Possession is all good and I think they got away with one here. Uh, 
They don't look as bad as Juventus, let's put it that way, but they, Barcelona doesn't look quite right. There is just something, and I think it's kind of, I feel that the support that Messi needs is missing. Um, they haven't figured out how to use Griezmann. Uh, they, yeah, now with the applying for hiring another striker, it's kind of excuses. I, I, you need to find a sol you, you know, you need to find the balance of what Setien wants to play and maybe take the good part of what worked under Valverde, where you're kind of a little bit more clinically. Um, that kind of needs to be still combined. But, you know, uh, they look vulnerable. Let's put it that way. Uh, what this will be mean for the Champions League, we will see. Uh, Villarreal beats Levante 2-1, Granada 2-1 also over Valladolid, so they get a win. I saw Harris of uh, Sevilla Espanol. Sevilla, what can I say? I call them the most frustrating team in Europe, because whenever you get this teaser that they might challenge for those top spots, they only have stinkers. Ocampos after an assist by Suso of all players. And I saw that Suso is truly doing the same tricks in Spain that he did in Italy. In Italy, they figured him out after a year uh, and a half or so. Uh, let's see how long it will take Spain. Probably even less because they have started to Suso. But at least he gave an assist. I'm very happy for him. I don't wish him in any way bad. Uh, however, Espanyol got back into the game and uh, they had to do without Raul de Tomas, who has been in a sensational form, but they get their two goals. And Barba in the 35th and then Wu Lei, best prime time in China playing, gets the 2-1 and you think that, Bar uh, that Espanyol might actually get something out, out, out of this, but late Suso after Sisper Campos, they switched it around, gets an equalizer and this was the typical Suso goal he Runs on the right, cuts in and takes a shot. And this time it didn't hit the upper ranks of the stadium. Now it hits the bottom of the um, net. Good, 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 good. Um, the equalizing goal I have has it by Embarba was a free kick. You that you gotta watch. I have, I, I forgot if I forgot about this. Uh, the Ball is kicked below the wall and there is a player lying there, but he stretches his feet up and it goes between his feet. Uh, um, crazy. In youth, it really goes through the wall and through the player that's lying behind to avoid that. Uh, absolutely crazy. Also has has, has the same that uh, with a um, yellow red for Sanchez that's kind of hit the break on Espanyol, who also they are now collecting points, but they cannot get this a punch to get them uh, out of the relegation zone, as we'll see. Leganes also gets a point against uh, Betis, uh, but with goal is draw. Eba Real Sociedad has been cancelled due to um, landfill uh, burning, and there was toxic gas in, in, and they are really weird, scary story. Let's see when they will play. Athletic Club loses at home to Osasuna. I, I didn't see really much of that, although I had it on, but I didn't pay much attention to it. And I didn't pay much attention to Real Madrid Celta Vigo because of another game in Italy that was going on. But I saw the highlight. Celta Vigo, through Smolov, takes the lead and frustrates Real Madrid. For Real Madrid, though, with a confident performance, uh, you know, they always had, had the feeling it's only a matter of time, but, um, you know, if a Sergio Ramos is not keeping his, his position and is very much um, into this uh, chatting up the referee, not usually not going to work all, the, all that well for long. But they get the equalizer uh, through cross, really nice shot directly into the near corner um, after assist by Marcelo. Uh, then uh, Azar, who was back into the game, and I think they will need him back to play in the Champions League, um, is felt after our this, um, consultation. It's a penalty that Ramos steps up, makes it 2-1, and everyone thinks, yeah, that's that. But yeah, you have not really thought that Celta Vigo can hit you. Uh, going going forward and after Suarez assists Santimina puts it nicely into the net in the 85th and then Real Madrid got again we need to get this point we need to get all the points we need to get all all the points Ramos now was a challenge in the box probably not enough for a penalty very very late on but they do not get the win and so 
Barcelona with a sloppy performance closes the gap. It's only one point with Real Madrid in Barcelona. Getafe is now behind, you know, um, Atletico Madrid is uh, fourth, Sevilla fifth. Villarreal is, yeah, there are so many teams that could go, go in there. I mean, it's really uh, one, two, clear, and then the rest kind of on the bottom. I have in mind that the Rasa has a game in hand, so they could uh, be all the way up in sixth spot. Um, and then I would say Granada there is kind of the no man's uh, land, potentially going up until A bar. Celta Vigo currently out of relegation zone. Mallorca, Leganes, and Espanyol, it's just four teams uh, and they're two points apart. If anyone uh, from Via Valladolid or Eibar comes down here, could happen because the teams on the bottom are now consistently making points and maybe this will go places. Let's quickly look th uh, through League A uh, where Monaco beat Montpellier 1-0 then Amiens with an absolutely crazy game against PSG. I was briefly cons considering watching that one, didn't, and then I saw the result and I regretted it and I needed to watch the highlights immediately. Amiens had a 3-0 lead um, in the 40th minute, Diapate makes it 3-0. Uh, of course, PSG not playing with a full strength squad uh, because they want to save their energies for Dortmund. And Herrera puts one back for PSG right before the half and then it turns around. Kwasi with two goals within five minutes, uh, assisted by Draxel and Di Maria each, uh, make it 3-3 uh, and Icardi seemingly gets the winner in the 74th, <laughs> but nope. Guarassi, Guarassi gets a late goal and PSG would have even had the chance to win it. PSG playing in the red jerseys, which I didn't quite understand because I think in Amir they also could have played with that one, uh, with their regular ones. But 4-4, pretty big result. Bordeaux only manages, manages a 2-2 against Dijon, not met and scoreless. Nîmes Angea, win for Nîmes, will be uh, good for them. Toulouse loses to Nice. Lyon only a draw against Strasbourg, so you know, you see all the top teams kind of also not getting somewhere. Reims wins against Rennes, Brest beats Saint-Étienne, <laughs> so all the teams that you would expect, but then I wanted to see how that didn't see Marseille gets a big win over Lille. So in the table, uh, PSG has still the 10 point lead over Marseille, but Marseille is clearly the second best team now. Rennes. Uh, is more than 10 points behind. Lille is nowhere near. And see who's up there. Monaco suddenly. They were just midfield not, not too long ago. I said in France it's crazy. Um, again, I think anyone... I would say Im Angers is not entirely out of it, but uh, realistically, I think anyone between Nantes and Rennes can get in European spots in France. I really would think so. Dijon is now... Um, just behind Nîmes uh, in falls into the relegation spot. So uh, they are in there and it's Amiens and Toulouse that are currently down there. But yeah, I think that uh, those last two are probably giving the others much, much, much closer. We'll see who will get the relegation spot. France is probably the most level league. I have to have the, f uh, the feeling if you take out the top two and everything else is very even. And then let's go to Portugal, where I watched a little bit of Benfica Braga. Braga playing in this, those uh, Roman warrior jerseys that I reviewed in the Europa League jersey review. Absolutely crazy jerseys, but uh, interesting ones. Uh, I didn't get a sense for the game because it was a 1-0 Braga, which was scored from a header after a corner right before uh, halftime. I saw a huge chance for Benfica before that, and of course Benfica were pressing, but Braga also had chances to make it 2-0. But Benfica loses the second game in a row, a second uh, time in, 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 in a row that was actually kind of against a bigger opponent, which yeah gave Porto the chance to get within a point and that they managed but that was not the story of the game. Uh, Douglas gets an own goal uh, for Porto, 1-0, uh, Boron Duarte can equalize and then Musa Marega, the Mali uh, striker who has been abused the whole game already and I saw now a few clips um, on online, I heard, I heard about it in the morning. 
he scores the goal. He has been playing for Guimarães seemingly and points at his color of the skin. And, you know, uh, people go nuts on him. Someone is even ripping a chair down that he lifts up. And for that, he gets a yellow frown from the referee. I think at that point, he completely lo lo loses it and he wants to be substituted. Uh, once a storm of players try to keep him on. But this is where I, you know... This whole racist abuse is uh, becoming a big thing now all over Europe um, and that people are speaking out against it and I have the feeling that soccer clubs just are put in a position where they have to, to, to defend the general attitude of society in, 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 in a way. It's, in a way, it's hard for soccer clubs to step in and correct something for society. Yes, they can take actions. But uh, that's not what the war, war, war the really want to talk Inexcusable to have this ha happening, especially, I, wa I was surprised to see it in Portugal, because poor Portugal, uh, they have the African colonists. Uh, their biggest player was black, Eusebio. I mean... That's where, where I don't really get, get it. it. I probably assume that uh, the supporters are still mad at Marega for making the move to Porto, a uh, rival. Maybe that plays something in it. Um, no excuses there. This needs to be addressed by Vittoria Guimaraes. Bar none. But what I will, would have liked to see is that uh, despite them being 2 one up and despite being in that rut that the players of Porto walk out with Marega. That would have sent a really, really strong statement. This way they just try to, to you know, please stay calm, please stay with us. I think stand with, with, with the body and walk off. Or the coach do it like Angelotti said, he never uh, could actually fall, fall up with it. I actually would have liked to see that. Uh, the Ange uh, uh, Angelotti once said when I think it was cool cool about it last, last season when he got so abused by Inter fans that they will walk walk, walk off and then no one hit and they never got, got, got into the situation that's what Sergio Contessaro should, should, should have said to his players let's come on let, let, let's leave it, uh, three points are not as important Similarly, three points are that important and I think it would have taken such a statement that the referee is giving a yellow card to a player who visibly got taunted and upset. And, you know, he's just pointing, you know, I'm black. I'm, 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 I'm strong. I feel very much with Marega because this is horrible, a horrible e e experience. And I have to say, uh, even now that in Spain, they abandoned once again, but it was because uh, a player got taunted a rush uh, uh, somewhere from uh, from there who had kind of they were assuming that he has nazi connect, uh, connection and they protected him but when the same racist abuse happened in other stadiums they are not doing anything double standards yeah i would really ask people to walk off the field that's all i want to say to that i'm wearing this uh it's kind of in support of Musa Marega. Um, I I know he has missed his chance, but I actually like this player a lot. I saw him in the Champions League as well in the Africa Cup. I think he's a pretty awesome player. So, yeah, I really hope that the Portuguese Federation does the right thing and cancels his, his yellow card and talks to that referee a lot because you cannot hide behind the rules. There you need to take the, you need to see the bigger picture. In the table now, what this means is that Porto is within a point. Benfica lost, had a seven-point lead two weeks ago. Now it's down to one point. That is a story in, in unto itself. Family Cow, as, as we saw, got uh, only a draw, and so it is uh, Braga and Sporting, who uh, Sporting only uh, also a draw. They're down in the Europa League spots, but there it's much tighter. But the top two are peaking out for a title once more. Anyway. Let me know what you think about all these games. Uh, if you have any opinion on what happened in Port Portugal, France, feel, feel me in. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop comments below. Very welcome. Um, and yeah, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. 
Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.